Today we're going to learn how to set up a health bar inside our Unity game and this is actually a continuation of the last video where we learned how to set up a health system inside our game. You don't have to follow that particular video but if you don't have a health system already meaning that your player can take damage and it does actually have health but it's just not displayed then I recommend checking out the previous video that we did on health system. Inside my project I have the exact same thing as we ended off with in the health system video so you can see we just have a basic player that has a player uh, controller attached to it that allow for me to move left and right up and down. I do also have a game manager that just basically stores the health of my players. So if my health goes to zero, then I can actually end the game. Uh, so we just basically have the game manager storing the, the health. So just to kind of show what I have so far, if I were to press play, you can see that we can move my player left and right. We can go up and down. And if we were to press the space key, I actually take damage and it actually outputs it into the console. So now it says that I have 80 in health. If I do it again, you can see now we have 60. If I press the shift key, I heal 10. So now I'm at 70 health. Uh, so essentially we have a health system that's working. And then essentially all you would have to do is to make sure that instead of pressing the space and the shift key on the keyboard, uh, you would register a damage or a healing when you pick up a health item or if the enemy hits you or something. So that's just essentially what you have to do there. But that's besides the point because that's not what we're going to do in this video. We're just going to focus on creating a health bar so we can actually see something inside the game and not inside the console because the console doesn't really do anything for us when we're actually playing the game. So the first thing I want to mention here is that there is a couple of different ways you can do it. You can just go ahead and create a empty game object and actually start filling it out with uh, images. You can go ahead and create just a, a 2D square that you can then resize and, and set the pivot point on in order to create a health bar. But since we're doing a game and I think that health bars are just kind of a UI thing, let's actually go ahead and do that using a UI system. So I'm going to go inside my hierarchy. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go down and say I want to create a UI image. And inside the UI image, I'm going to rename it as HB underscore overlay. And that's because this is going to be the image that is going to contain the overlay of my health bar that we're going to have up in the corner. Now, if you've never worked with UIs before, essentially when you create a canvas inside your hierarchy, that is going to contain all the UI elements for this particular health bar. So if I were to double click the canvas inside the hierarchy, you can actually see, oh, it zooms out. And now all of a sudden we are completely gone from the game. And we now have this square that shows my UI basically that I just created. Some of you may be a little bit iffy about not being able to see the game at the same time as you're actually seeing the UI. If you want to do that, you can just go ahead and go into game in the tab here, drag it over so you can actually see how it looks like inside your game. Because as you can see, if I double click my player, he's down here in the corner essentially down there. But you can't just go ahead and drag over the game view so you can see everything. Inside my canvas, I'm going to go ahead and click my HB underscore overlay, which is the health bar overlay. I'm going to go inside my inspector over here. And as you can see, we now have a image component. Inside of the image component, we can go ahead and add which sprite we want to have as an overlay. I do already have a couple of sprites ready that I created inside Photoshop just so I had something to put on top of my health bar. So inside my sprites folder, I do have a overlay for the health bar. And I also created a heart that I'm going to put next to my health bar so we actually can tell what exactly that bar is. Now, if you use Photoshop to create your sprites, you do want to make sure that you click your sprite and go in and select the remove matte PSD if you're using any kind of alpha inside your images. Otherwise, the alpha is going to look weird and white. Uh, so you do want to tick that on, click apply and do that for all your images. After doing that, I'm going to go ahead and click the health bar overlay again inside my hierarchy. I'm just going to go ahead and take my overlay and drag onto my source image. And then you can actually see that we kind of have it down here at the bottom. It is a little bit weird and stretched. So what we can do is we can actually go ahead and click set native size, which is going to just make it into the size that the image actually is. And with that, it's going to stretch out to normal proportions and everything. Now, currently it's just kind of sitting down there in the corner. So what I do want to make sure I do is that I click this little square we have inside the inspector once we have it selected. And I want to make sure I hold down Alt because if we don't do that, you only move the anchor point, but not the image itself. So I'm going to hold down Alt and I'm going to go ahead and click the middle here. And then you can see that it actually moves it to the center of my canvas. So with the overlay, we now need to add in a filling so we can actually see when the player actually takes damage or gets healed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside my canvas again. I'm going to right click. I'm actually going to create a empty game object and I'm going to name this one HB underscore fill. Inside the empty game object, I'm going to right click and I'm also going to add a UI image again. I'm going to rename this one as HB underscore fill. 
underscore color. And now you might be asking, why do we have to create a empty game object and then insert another image inside of that one? And that will make sense in just a second. We will get to it. So for now, I'm going to go inside my HB underscore fill, which is the empty game object that we created. And I'm going to resize it so it goes to the border of my overlay. So you can actually see we get these little corners here. I can drag. Now, if you hold down Alt, it's going to allow for you to scale proportionally so we don't have to do it on both sides going to just release it here and it's not really doing anything visually but if we go into our hb fill color go into the little image up here so we can scale it and i'm going to hold down alt and pick the one in the bottom right corner which is going to say we want to scale it to the center but we also want to stretch it out to the border of whatever container it's inside of which is why we needed to have this parent element there's another reason why we also need to have the parent element, but we will get to that. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and change the color of this image here. So I'll just click the image color and then I'll change it to red. So it actually matches with a health bar. Now, something that's really important to mention here is that whenever you want to change the sizing of this red bar that you have here, you don't want to be changing it inside the fill color, but instead do it inside the empty game object that we created, which is the HB underscore fill. And I'm just going to go ahead and resize it here. And as you can see, it actually scales with the actual parent container. So what I want to do is I just want to make sure that it goes to the border of my empty uh, transparency inside my overlay, you know, just so we don't have it going far beyond, but we also don't have it before it actually stops here. So you can see there's a little bit of transparency going on in here. Again, depending on what kind of image you have, it's going to resize a little bit differently, but I'm just going to go ahead and resize it to just around here. Now, I do also want to just pull it a little bit down from the top just so we don't have it peeking up above my overlay image. And just like that, I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to take the HP fill move it above my overlay because when it comes to canvases, whatever is at the top is what goes behind inside the order. And then you can see we have this inside um, our little overlay here. So it actually looks neat and tidy. So with this created, we can now go ahead and add the slider effect. So we can actually control how much filling it should have depending on what the health of the player is. So I'm going to go inside my HB underscore fill. I'm going to add a component, which is going to be a slider. And inside the slider component, we can just sort of tick off the interactable, the transition, because we don't need to have that when it's just a simple slider for a health bar. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the fill color, drag it into my fill rectangle, which is inside the slider component. And just like that, you can see it just kind of goes away. And that's because right now we have a value set to zero inside this little slider that we have inside the component that allow for us to control how much of the filling should be filled out inside our health bar. Now, currently inside our game here, we have a health bar for the player that is set to 100 when we start out. So the, the max value that we should be able to set should probably be 100. So I'm going to set the max value in here to 100, which is something that might be a little bit irrelevant because when we actually start up the game, we can just change this inside using code. Um, but let's just go ahead and change the UI so it matches inside the component here. So I'm going to go ahead and set it to 100. I do also want to mention really quickly that we have something called whole numbers, which allow for me to, when I drag this little bar here, not to have decimal points. As you can see, it's 66.2 right now but if we were to tick this on it's just going to be 66 and that is just kind of a, a neat thing depending on how the, you want the effect of the health bar to be if you want it to be more of a you know fixed numbers when you take damage or if you want something a little bit smoother then this is something you can tick on and off but with this you can now essentially just add any kind of decorations you want to your health bar so i'm going to go ahead and right click on my canvas because i do have one i do have the little heart down there so i'm going to create another ui image i'm going to insert it i'm just going to call it hb underscore uh, heart and then I'm just going to drag my heart into the slot that we have over here. And of course, I do also want to set a native size because right now it's not scaled properly. So I'm going to click this button here and then I'm just going to move it to whatever I want it to be inside my uh, UI here. I'm going to go inside the anchor tool here and I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that it is centered to the center. So I'm just going to go ahead and click that and then I can just sort of drag it over to where I need it to be. So if I want it to be a little bit over here, I want to drag it down a little bit just so we can still see the health bar if it's close to zero. And just like that, we have something that looks pretty neat. I am going to go ahead and change the fill colors. So I'm just going to take the drop tool and just make sure it's the same color as the heart here. And the last thing we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and place it where we want to have it inside our game. So currently I'm going to have it up inside the top left corner because that makes sense. So I'm just going to take everything I have inside the canvas and just highlight it, drag it up here. 
And I can actually go ahead and just change the, the scaling of it. I'm holding down shift so we don't scale it like this. So holding down shift on the keyboard just kind of helps. And then I'm just gonna place it where I want it to be. So roughly around here. So if we were to play the game, you can actually see that now, if it were to go in here, you can see, oh, we have a health bar and I can move around my player and we can actually start taking damage or do something else. If you wanted to, you could also add a number inside the canvas. So you have a number of how much health you have. So it could be 100% or, you know, like 50%, depending on if you take damage or not. So that's something you just sort of add to it if you want to. So with the UI created, we now just need to go ahead and create a script that actually takes care of changing the UI so we can actually see the, the proper health inside the bar. So inside my assets folder, I'm just gonna go back and go inside my scripts folder going to right click, create a new script. And this is going to be a health bar script. The first thing I'm gonna do inside my health bar script is I'm going to clean up the code a little bit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete everything inside my class. And because we're going to be messing with the UI inside our code, we do actually need to add another namespace at the top. So I'm going to duplicate the last line we have here called using Unity Engine. And I'm just going to add dot UI at the end here. So with this, we can now go ahead and make changes to our slider inside the script here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab the slider. So I'm going to create a slider type variable. I'm going to name this one health slider. So with the slider, we can now go ahead and create any kind of method that actually changes the slider inside the UI. So for example, we can create a method that goes in and gives our player full health. For example, if we restart the game or if we go to the next level, if you want to start with max health, we can also create a method that adjusts the health. So if we're taking damage or if we're getting healed, then we can just sort of adjust the health using that. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm going to add in a public void. And I'm just gonna go and create a method called set max health parentheses, curly brackets. And here we do want to make sure we pass in the maximum amount of health that we can actually allow for our player to have, which we have inside our health system. So I'm going to say we want to add in a integer called max health. And then inside the actual method, we're going to grab the slider and I want to use a method called max value. This is the max value that you can set inside the inspector when we actually add it in the slider. So you can see we have the max value. And this is something you can change, let's say if the player gets a power up and we now need to have 120 as max health instead because now we became more powerful, uh, then we can do that using our code here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start by setting this one to my max health that is currently set inside my player's uh, data. And I do also want to make sure that I set my player's current health to the maximum amount of health that we can actually have. So I'm going to set the value, not the max value, but just the value to max health. Then I'm going to copy what we have here and just paste it down below because I also want to create a method that just sets our health. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rename it to set health and also change the integer inside our parameters. So it just says health. And then I'm just gonna go and delete the top line of code that we have in here since we don't need to actually set the maximum amount of health, but just the, the value for our health. And of course, we do also want to make sure we change the health that was passed in. Back inside Unity, I want to make sure we take the health bar script and I actually add it to my health bar fill. And lastly, we do also need to make sure that we actually grab the slider component inside the code here so we can actually access it. So I'm going to create a start method which is going to be the one that we have using mono behavior. And in here, I'm just gonna go ahead and take my health slider, set it equal to get components. And I'm just gonna go ahead and reference to the slider that we have inside our game object. And with that, we now have all the code we need in order to get the UI slider working. So what I can do now is I can go inside anywhere inside my code where I want my player to take damage or get healed. And I can call upon these methods here in order to change the UI as well. Going inside my player behavior, this is something that you may not have depending on if you followed the previous lesson or not. But essentially, this is just a player behavior script that I added to my player inside the game. And inside this script here, I just have some basic methods that goes in and actually allow for my player to take damage or get healed. And inside my update method, I just simply went in and said that if I press the space key, then go ahead and call upon this method down here to allow for my player to take damage. If I press the shift key, then call upon the method that heals my player, which is the one down here. So essentially that's all I have inside my player behavior script here. So what I wanna do is I want to make sure that we actually add the slider so we can actually manipulate it inside our code here. So at the very top, I'm going to say that I have a health bar type script that I want to grab. So I'm gonna say underscore health bar. And I'm going to make this into a serialized field so we can actually drag and drop the script in here so we know what we're referencing to. So I'm going to say serialize field. And with that, I'm going to go inside my health bar and I'm just gonna go down to the bottom here inside my player take damage, for example, paste it in, dot set health. 
parentheses. And then I just need to pass in the health that I want to set my health bar to. Now in this case here, we actually have our game manager's health saved in here so we can actually just reference to it. So currently if I want to grab my current health inside my game, I just say I want to grab the game manager and I want to grab the player health dot health which is where I have my health stored. So I'm just gonna paste that in. And then I'm just going to copy this line of code, paste it down at the bottom here where we have the healing so that it also changes the health inside the UI when I actually receive healing. And this is basically all we need to have when it comes to changing our UI. So with that, I'm going to save it. I'm going to go inside my game and I want to make sure I actually drag my script onto my uh, player. So if I click my player game object, you can see that my player behavior script actually require a health bar script. So I'm going to take the hb underscore fill, which has the script attached to it, drag it into that slot. And with that, I can play the game, move around. And then you can see when I press space, it actually takes damage. If I press shift, it heals damage. And just like that, I can actually start manipulating the health bar inside my game. So I can keep going down, I can keep healing. And just like that, you know, everything's working like it's intended to. So with all that, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. This is a very cool and simple way to set up a health bar. I will also create a separate video where I just kind of show how to make the health bar follow your player. That is going to be a very short video because that is not very difficult to do. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one.